Um, again, Gabe Krebs, and we're going to be going over how to do an annual DOT inspection. First off, a DOT inspection is a yearly uh, go through the whole truck to ensure all the components of the truck and or trailer are working the way they should and are not worn out to cause any safety violations. Uh, the reason we do these is to keep the truck driver and everyone else around the driver safe while going down the road to complete the guy's day of work. First, we're going to go and start by the chalking the wheels of the truck. Make sure no, it's not going to roll away when we release the park brakes and we just know we're not going to get run over. Next, we're going to go ahead and check the lights in the truck. Uh, there's various lights around the truck and I'm going to have my assistant go and run the switches for me for demonstration purposes. First off, we're going to start by turning the clearance lights on. There's various clearance lights indicating up on the top of the truck for how wide the vehicle is and what type of vehicle uh, it is, but indicated by the three lights in the center. Next, we're going to make sure the two lights on each side of the headlights are working properly and there's no uh, obstructions and crack lenses for the headlights themselves. Then we're going to turn the headlights on, make sure they work properly, as well as the high beams. And they turn on and off properly. Next, we're going to come along this side of the truck, and there's a couple different lights over on this side. We have uh, clearance marker lights, as well as that turn the hazards on. These two lights flash for the hazards, as well as the right turn signal. They work as they should. Next, we're going to come around to the driver's side of the truck. Make sure they work as just uh, running lights, and as well as the hazards, and the left turn signal. And they do this properly. Next, there are a few lights in the back of the truck that we have to inspect. So we have just the running lights on, and then we're going to go to the hazards. Hazards work as they should. And then the right turn signal. Turn the right turn signal on. Perfect. And the left turn signal. And you're going to hit the uh, service brakes to make sure the brake lights work. Perfect. And as well as you have a license plate light, which we can see is working properly there. Then. Next, we're going to check the indicator lights inside the cab of the truck. First, we're going to, uh, there'll be an ABS light. It's going to turn on and off, making sure the ABS system is working properly, as well as some engine malfunction indicator lights. ABS light turns on, as well as the engine lights, and turns off as it should. Next, we're going to make sure the in the dash turn signals work for the left turn signal, the right turn signal, the hazards, as well as the high beams. Um, we're also going to check that the defrost is working properly so and the fan blower. Have it set to defrost, turn it up. Now you're going to reach up here and make sure that you can feel the air blowing up onto the windshield, which it is properly. Next we're going to go and check the wiper blades. Make sure the wiper blades work as well as the washer fluid. So you're going to want to make sure that it's cleaning the windshield properly from left to right, top to bottom. So I can see it's missing a couple streaks here, so I'd note that it'd be due for a new set of wiper blades. And as well, when you're looking at the front view, you want to make sure that there's no cracks, chips, or dings, or glazing in the windshield, which can be anywhere on in the driver's view to obstruct that while he's going down the road. Next, we're going to also make sure that the side mirrors are not cracked and they are properly adjusted for um, being able to see down the road. Next, we're going to go and check out the front steering section of the truck.
couple different things up here that we're going to be looking at. First, I'm going to start with the steering column. The shaft right here goes up to the steering wheel and down to the steering gearbox. And what we want to inspect for is looseness, so you can make sure it's tight, as well as inspecting the U-joints, making sure there's no shiny metal indicating wear or lack of lubrication. Next, that's going to come down to the steering gearbox. You want to make sure that the hoses running from the reservoir to the gearbox are not leaking at all and the hardware connecting them is there and it's um, firmly secured. From there you want to check to make sure all the bolts holding the gearbox to the frame rail are there and you want to make sure there's no shiny threads or pit, uh, rust trails indicating loose hardware. From there you're going to follow it right down to the pitman arm. The pitman arm connects to the steering gearbox and the drag link for the steering section for the steering system. Um, you want to make sure that the pinch bolt is there and does not show any signs of fretting or loose um, shiny threads indicating a loose bolt. On the other end, we're going to make sure that the castle nut is still there and with the cot lock and cotter key. Attached to the pitman arm, we're going to inspect the drag link. The drag link connects the pitman arm to the upper control arm. What we're going to do is wiggle it, make sure it does not move at all, any, any direction, and that the, each ball joint is properly greased and make sure that the castle keys and um, castle nuts and lock keys are still there. From there, later on, I'm going to sh we're going to check the dry, uh, dr tie rod, make sure the tie rod ends are tight, as well as having the locking hardware for them. From there, we're going to go uh, while we're up here, we're going to check the brake hoses. Make sure the brake hoses don't show any signs of abrasions, bulges, or cuts indicating any air leaks or any audible air leaks. While we're up here, we're going to check the power steering fluid. This particular truck, you can just shine a light and see where the level is, and it's showing right at the max level where it's supposed to be. And while, while you're up here, you're going to make sure all the steering uh, components are properly greased and lubricated to make sure it's steering properly down the road. And we're also going to look at the U joints or the U bolts. U bolts got um, going to make sure they're tight, don't show any signs of shiny metal indicating looseness. And on the bottom, you're going to check the bolts, indicate uh, showing no shiny threads or rust trails leaving, indicating loose hardware. And since we have a multi multi leaf system up here, we want to make sure that the leaves are not scissored at all and perfectly aligned. And from the front, we're going to look at all the mounting hardware. Make sure all that is, again, um, all present and don't show any signs of shiny threads indicating loose hardware. That'd be front and rear. And when we get to the wheel, we're going to make sure that there are no abrasions, bulges, or cuts on the outside, inside, and the top of the tire. And we're going to want to look at the top and make sure the tread's wearing flat and evenly so it have got a proper alignment. And you're going to make sure there's no illegal welds or cuts on the rim itself, on the front side and the outside. And once you go get around here, you're going to make sure that all the lug nuts are tight. Make sure they're all present. You're going to have to pop off all the caps, make sure there's no shiny threads indicating loose lug nuts or rust trails leaving. And while we're on there, we're going to check the air pressure in the tire. You have to do that on every single tire around the truck. Take an air pressure gauge, get the tire stem, press them, press it in firmly, and you can read the pressure and make sure it is at the OEM specification. While we work our way around the truck, we're gonna. This truck has dual fuel tanks on it, so we'll check the one on this side first. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that the fuel cap is present and is tight. Once you remove it. I want to make sure that the uh, seal is still there as well as the locking chain so it does not get removed. And make sure it locks properly. Uh, I'm going to check the fuel tank straps, which are right, right here, where, and where they connect to the frame rail. I want to make sure that there's no loose hardware and no shiny threads indicating uh, looseness. And once you get underneath the truck, there will be a few fuel lines to return and a feed. I want to make sure there's no, uh, no fuel leaking at all, as well as around the tank straps if there's any rust going on there. When you get to the duals, uh, I want to make sure there's no obstructions in between the tires at all. And from the frame clearance, you want to make sure there's nothing rubbing or that can touch the tires while it's going down the road. 
going to the inside, uh, we're going to check the suspension, which right here it'll be the trailing or the front leaf hanger. Make sure that is fully secured to the frame rail. Make sure all the hardware is there and doesn't show any signs of uh, shiny threads indicating looseness. As well on the back, this truck is set up with an air ride suspension. Uh, you want to make sure that the airbag is not ripped, torn, no abrasions or bulges in it, indicating a leak at all. And, um, and as well as the hardware on the top and the bottom, make sure it's not showing any signs of shiny threads indicating a looseness. And when you get to the front side of the wheel, we're going to pop all the caps off, make sure all the all lug nuts are tight, as well as checking the air pressure in the truck. You can fr firmly pull it on there, and it'll read the pressure, and record it, make sure it meets the OEM specification for the inner and the outer dual, which they look good. And when it comes to checking the brake stroke and the brake pads, we're going to use this setup here for demonstration purposes. When I get to the pads, you want to um, look underneath, and there will either be a wear indicator in the V of the pads showing the quarter inch, or you can take a quarter inch uh, extension and hold it to the pad and the drum, make sure it's at least a quarter inch for um, all, the all the brake pads around the truck. Then once you go after that, you're going to go and check the brake drum. Make sure the drum does not show any ex excess wear on the inside, indicating a worn out brake drum, which would also need replacement. After that, we're going to go and check the size of the brake chamber to indicate which um, what brake stroke is allowed for it. Either they'll have a, a tag on the chamber itself, but sometimes they get removed or fallen off down down the road. So you can take a tool similar to this and make sure all three points of contact are touching the chamber clamp, going all the way around the chamber. Pull it off, and it'll read type uh, 30 size uh, chamber on the park. Do the same thing for the service side. Be a th uh, type 30 on the service side as well. So look on the, um, for type 30 chamber, you'll have a maximum of two inches of brake stroke, which to measure brake stroke, it's how far the chamber has to get pushed to make the, uh, have the brakes do a full application. So to simulate a brake application, what you're gonna do is mark the push rod uh, somewhere easily visible, set a tape measure on it, mark it, and then once you put air to here, it'll simulate putting a, um, a service brake application on the truck. Push there, and moved up one inch, so um, it's still under the two inch max, uh, max spec for brake stroke. So, to go underneath, we'll do the same thing for the truck, and we'll get a real reading. Typically you'll have uh, an assistant go and press the service brakes for you uh, in the truck while you're down here measuring. Otherwise it's possible to do it by yourself, but for demonstration purposes we'll have him press the brakes. So what you're going to do is roll underneath, have him release the park brakes, um, you make mark on the brakes uh, push rod, and he'll press the service brakes and that'll give you your measurement for how much the brake stroke is. So you release the park brakes. And you're gonna make sure the truck is fully aired up and I'll make my mark and press the service brakes. I'll get my reading, which is at one and three quarters of an inch. Release the brakes. Set the parking brakes, and then you'll do that on every wheel end of the truck. So you get your readings for each wheel end. Um, record them, make sure none of them are out of spec. Otherwise, if they are out of spec, 
Uh, you'll have to either see if the brake shoes are just worn or if there's a problem with the automatic slack adjusters. If the brake pads look fine and you do find a problem with the automatic slack adjusters, uh, you'll have to either figure out the problem and repl then replace it, the slack, or um, yeah, so you want to measure all that before you do any adjustments on the brakes. And while you're coming around, after you check all the air pressure of the tires, you're going to need to check the tread depth. Take a tread depth gauge like this or any other type of measurement and just, uh, make, it, make it even and then set it in the center of the tire and press it down to the bottom of the tread depth. Then you get your reading on it, which this one is at 20, 30 seconds. Uh, on drive and trailer tires, it needs to be at least 2, 30 seconds of tread depth and on steer tires, at least 4, 30 seconds. Coming to the back, you're, while you're walking around the truck, you want to inspect the frame rails. Uh, and make sure all the hardware on them are tight and present, and there's no illegal welds or cuts on the frame. And there's no shiny threads or rust trails leaving any of the hardware indicating looseness. After that, you'll go and check this fuel tank as well. Make sure fuel tank straps are fully secured and there's no fuel, visible fuel leaks. And then after that, we'll get to the exhaust system. So you do the exhaust, you either start underneath the truck or from the exhaust manifold and work your way back. But what you'll be looking for is any loose um, hardware or um, for indicated by shiny threads, as well as any black soot trails in between any mating surfaces indicating a loose or a leaking gasket. You'll start there, work your way all the way back underneath the truck and as well as all the clamps all the way down to the tailpipe. And right here you can in, um, demonstrate showing you how to check the tie rod. What you'll do is you'll wiggle it back and forth, up and down, and make sure that the castle nuts are fully seated and locked in. that we're going to go in the truck and uh, check some warning other warning devices for the air brake system. So what you need to do is make sure that when you press in the tractor protection valve that it is pops back out by itself at a minimum of 20 psi. What you do is press in the red service red uh, tractor brake or trailer brake, and watch your air gauge and see what psi it pops out at. which it pops out at 75 and 80 PSI, which is above the limit. Next, we're gonna check for the tractor warning, um, low pressure warning devices, which you'll, just for um, reasons, will hold this down and wait for the um, visual and audible warning lights to come on. which the audible buzzer and as well as the visual buzzer come on at right about 65 and 70 PSI in both tanks. Next we're gonna do is check for, um, check for the air compressor function, uh, make sure it works properly. Uh, we're gonna do start the truck, make sure it gets to 80 PSI, and then it has to take a minimum of 60 seconds to hit the governed cutout pressure. It should be indicated by a psh sound coming from the front of the dryer. Make sure the truck's in neutral, press in the clutch, and then start the truck.
show that the air compressor is working properly and built up air in time. Then we need a tape measure to uh, measure the steering wheel free play. For the 18 inch steering wheel this has, uh, the maximum requirement or maximum limit of steering wheel free play is four and three quarters of an inch. To measure that, you have to set the steering wheel nice and flat or as flat as possible and make a mark on the steering wheel. What you're gonna do is hold the tape measure on something steady so you can have an even measuring surface. Then you're gonna start the truck and wiggle, watch, watch the wheel and find out right, the limits of right before it starts actually turning the wheels down below and see how much movement it has. And for power steering system trucks, you do have to have the truck running for this. Make sure it's in neutral. This truck was showing about two and a half inches, so it is still underneath that four and three quarter inch requirement. This will exit the truck. And for the fifth wheel aspect, uh, I marked this prior, but then we're going to go and hook up to a trailer and get the fish, fifth wheel measurements. But I already marked the lines between the, the base and the slider plate, as well as the pivot pin and the lower half. That's We're going to measure how far each slides forward and backwards between the truck when you push and pull it on a trailer. All right, so we're going to start by chalking the wheels again. Then what we're going to do is met, uh, make a mark from the slide plate rails to the slide plate and from the slide plate to the upper half to uh, we're going to measure for once it back up the trailer we're going to measure how much it, everything moves forward and backwards to figure out if it's out of spec for the wear and as a newer DOT trailer so we know that the kingpin is in spec as well so next I'm going to back under the trailer and I'm going to set the back pressure on it and set the park brake so then I can make my final marks on the trailer and then we're going to pull forward and make another make our read our measurements and see where we're at. Chalk the wheels again, then we're gonna make our mark on the apron of the trailer. Gonna check, make sure that our fifth wheel locking handle is in, and we're gonna go to the back and make sure that the jaws are around the kingpin, which they are. So next, I'm gonna go and pull the truck, remove the tracks, pull the truck forward, and then chalk it up again and measure how far everything slid forward.
place the chocks back under the wheels. I'm going to take my measurements between all of them. So that one did, between the slider plate and the slide rails, it did not move. And between the slide, slide pin and the upper half, we moved a total of an eighth of an inch. And between the fifth wheel and the apron, moved a total of another eighth of an inch. So that is still under spec, which so then that fifth wheel is still good for operation for the next year. I'm Gabe Krebs, and this is my video presentation on a DOT annual inspection for a Class 8 tractor trailer. And went over everything you need to do for inspecting and uh, making sure everything is proper for uh, safe, safe operation down the road. And the reason why we do it is keep the driver safe and all of us safe on the road. Thank you.